This garage. It's winter time. I don't have a heater. Let's go put my daughters on. What do you think? That work? No. Comfortable. All right. Today we're going to be doing barbell squats. Uh, specifically, we're going to be doing low bar, and I'm going to show you uh, my technique, what works for me, and uh, maybe it's something that could be helpful for you. I'll break it down. Uh, step by step, we'll go into uh, everything from setting up the bar to foot placement um, and the variations. My dogs are barking. I don't know what they're barking at, but I'm just going to let them run. So, for starters, I got the rack set to my height. I'm five foot nine and a smidgen. You'll notice that I'm barefoot right now. I will, I'm going to put my squat shoes on when I start uh, getting into it, but. I want to warm up with just the bar. I think I said in the previous video, I always use the bar when I uh, warm up for compound lifts. So we start with the bar. Uh, I'm 46, I'll be 47 soon. And um, even though I do spend a lot of time stretching, doing yoga, things of that nature for flexibility, when I wake up and get going, sometimes ah, things are tight. You know, it's just, it doesn't seem to matter how much I spend on uh, being flexible, and I am fairly flexible for my age, uh, I wake up and things are just tight and crunchy, you know, knees pop, I've had ACL surgeries, I've had back injuries, I had 48 stitches in my back, I've, I've been all beat up, man, over the years. I spent some time in the military, I work in the trade, beat my body up for a living. So, I'm going to get out of the bar, I'm going to get it right over my rear delts. I got a shelf, I got my elbows back, I got my fingers on the first rings of this bar. And uh, I'm, I try to cheat the bar as low as I can manage where, where it won't slip off the back. And the reason for that is, is the farther down the back I can get the bar, uh, the more it affects my center of gravity and the easier it is for me to stay upright. Now I kind of follow the uh, Mark Ripito uh, squat form where you know, a lot of people tell you to look up. I say look down. So I'm kind of, uh, I have my head in a down position. I've got my feet planted firmly. And much like my deadlift, they're out at about a 20 degree angle. When I squat, my knees track my toes. So if my feet go out, my knees go out. They always follow the toes. If I go with a wide stance, I've got my feet out and my knees are following, they're following the toes. That way you're not caving in. For me, I got a, about a shoulder width stance. I'm pretty narrow, like a, an Olympic lifter. It's just what works for me. And I'm just gonna do some warm ups. I'm gonna sit into it. Kinda, when I breathe, I'm relaxing the muscles. I'm almost melting into it. If I wanted to, I could just stay in this position all day. I'm relaxed right now. Now I'm gonna tense everything up and pop up. And I'm gonna do another one of those and just work, work a little bit. Just get comfortable. I'm trying to just limber everything up, stretch everything out. You know, you can hear, if you could hear on the, my knees popping and my ankles cracking and everything's crunching. Just trying to, you know, just, Get everything lubricated, all the parts moving. <sighs> if you need to, do a couple sets like that. You know, even do body weight. Just, you know, 
you can get your uh, you can get the legs, you can stretch them out, sit in this position. Uh, I think it's really important for people to be able to sit in the seated squat position. Like, really be able to sit into it. Like, if I wanted to, if I was working on a project, let's say, and I was assembling things, and I'm working in front of me, I could literally sit here for as long as I need to. Um, it's better than, like, you know, working on your knees. You'll see a lot of guys in construction, they've got big knee pads on, and, and uh, you know, they work on their knees. At the end of the day, everything hurts. They can barely move. They have a hard time walking. Well, for me, I can just, if I need to work on the ground, I can just sit like this. Um, and uh, we'll go into uh, flexibility videos in the future, but for now, I want to focus on the squat. So that's the warm up. Squat shoes. Uh, a lot of people use Olympic lifting shoes, uh, a lot of people use Chuck Taylors. I like the Vans. Uh, they have a conco concave. Uh, it's kind of curved in. Uh, it's vulcanized rubber, very solid, and they're designed for skateboards. So the the point of the concave is when you're standing on the ground, it's very flat and rigid, so your uh, ankles can't roll. Now I've modified these a little bit. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but there's a. I actually uh, used a jigsaw and cut out uh, the heel section uh, and the midsole as a template, a uh, three quarter inch plywood, and I sanded and molded it to the curvature of my foot. So what it does is it raises my heel three quarters of an inch and it's tapered to the to the contour of my foot. So these things are custom fit for my foot. Um, essentially, I turned uh, a regular skate shoe into a squat shoe. And uh, they work great. I love them. Uh, what's nice about these is they're way cheaper than uh, most squat shoes. I had the Innovates. Uh, I forgot which brand it was or the model of the shoe, but it, they were 190 bucks. Um, I liked them. They were okay. Uh, I wound up giving them away to a friend because over the uh, over the time. Uh, of my lifting my stance changed considerably and I went from a narrow stance to a wide stance and for wider stance squatting especially low bar squat shoes will not help you they'll actually hurt you is if you go with a wide stance they're designed for Olympic lifting uh, if you've ever seen an Olympic lifter they're pretty they kind of stack themselves they're pretty compact so they have a pretty narrow stance um, some people do better without an elevated a heel. It all depends on your genetics, your body makeup, your the length, height. You might be really tall, you might be really short. Uh, the the only way you're going to find that out is to kind of experiment a little bit. Um, I don't know. It's kind of tough to experiment to go spend uh, 200 bucks on shoes and find they don't work for you. Now a lot, a lot of people will they say to themselves, "I bought this shoe. It's 200 dollars. I can't let it go to waste, so I'm going to use it," and it's not helping them. You know, if it's not helping you, don't use it. You, you know, I know you spent a lot of money and you feel like you you, you need to use that, but, get, you know, sell them. Put them on offer up or whatever. Uh, if you, if you uh, put an ad out for shoes that you wore a couple times, someone will buy them, trust me. Um, Chuck Taylors, the most common lifting shoe on the planet. Nothing wrong with them. I don't like them simply because this is a much softer rubber and it's rounded a little bit and uh, I just feel like I get a better uh, a more sturdy uh, solid base from this shoe this was $45 uh, the wood was for uh, scrap wood and then of course the time invested in into uh, fabricating that I'm gonna get some flack for wearing these my, my tights I'm wearing them so uh, you can kind of see what's going on with uh, my depth and my form uh, if you wear baggy shorts it's kind of hard to you know get a good view of everything uh, plus they're way more comfortable i highly recommend them uh, spd sleeves i think they're the best on the market uh, there's a lot of there's a few brands that are really good um, i'm not endorsed by any products so i'm not going to go into them but essentially um, you get the uh, the, the high-end 
uh, knee sleeves, they will actually help you squat more. Um, they give you a bit of a mechanical advantage. They're uh, this thick neoprene, kind of like a diving suit. Um, and they're, you, uh, I buy mine a size too small, so they're tighter on purpose. They're kind of hard to put on. Uh, the way I put mine on is I kind of roll them up the ankle. So basically, I'll put them on my foot and I'll kind of cuff them like this. And I'll pull them cuffed up to half past the calf. And then from there, I will roll them up. Um, if you try to pull them up, it's very difficult. You'll be tugging on it for hours. If you get a little bit sweaty in the summertime, they're really hard to get on. I've had to use baby powder, all sorts of stuff. But essentially, if you get a good snug fitting knee sleeve, as you go down, they compress and they spring up a little bit. Now, what kind of an advantage does that give you? Well, maybe five, maybe 10 pounds more on your squat. Um, your knees feel better. It gives you a little more confidence while you're lifting. Uh, 10 pounds, does it matter? Well, it could. They're legal in competition, so that means everybody can wear them. If you choose not to wear them, you know, that's on you. Uh, but, you know, records have been broken by a pound or two. You know, there's uh, sometimes that extra five pounds is going to make or break you. Now, for the average person that just wants to learn how to squat so they can get in shape, I still think the knee sleeves are a good idea. They just kind of keep everything you know, warm, safe, tight. Uh, they'll give you a little more confidence when you got the bar on your back. Uh, just try it, you know, like squat without them and then squat with them and feel just how much more control you feel like you have, especially at the lighter weights. Uh, definitely worth the investment. And you can use them for a lot more stuff than squatting, but uh, right now I've got 135 pounds on the bar. I already showed you the bar warm up. Same thing. I get under the bar, I got my hand fingers on the first rings. I can make my shelf with my delts. I got my elbows back, stand straight up. I'm gonna take one step backwards, get my feet set. <clears throat> Back's gonna be straight, core's tight, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna break. We're gonna break the hips. So almost like I'm gonna stick my butt back and break it. And then I'm going to try to, you see the angle of my back? Um, I, I'm focusing my eyes on one point of the wall down here. I'm going to break the hips and my knees are going to come out and you know, they're going to track out. So I want to sit in between my thighs, essentially. I'm going to do an ass to grass squat just to demonstrate. Uh, so I'm going to break and I'm going to sit into it. And my back is tight, my core is tight. I'm not relaxing at the bottom. Then I'm gonna fire up. Break, fire up. Now, uh, my descent is a two count. So I'm like, one, two, fire. One, two, fire. One, two, fire. Couple things to note. I'm not coming up on my heels. I'm lifting from my heels. My feet are flat, like they're drilled into the ground. And as I break and I come down, if you're rolling up on your feet, you're too far forward. If you're coming back up on your heels, you're too straight up. You kind of want to live in that, uh, you want to kind of hinge down, hinge up. You don't want to do this. You don't want to do that. That's pancaking. Let me demonstrate a pancake squat. You'll see a lot of guys do this. They'll get under it and they come down and they're like way over the bar. Holy shit. Ugh. I hope I just got demonetized. Oh no. Whoa. That's a pancake squat. That's bad. That's way too much pressure on your lower back. And then the other problem, if you're too far back, 
and you're back on your heels and you're lifting straight up, you can you lose balance, you can fall backwards. Now, walking the bar into the squat rack. For me, I have this power rack. So you see a lot of guys, they'll come and they'll fumble with hooks and getting it hooked up. It's, it's easy. I just walk straight into the rack and slide it down. So that way when I have a lot of weight on my back, I don't have to struggle with getting it hooked in. I just walk into it and slide down. Easy peasy. So we've gone over the basic squat setup, but uh, just a couple of key points. Um, for, for competition purposes, you only have to go below 90. So what that means is your hip, what the judge is looking for is your hips below the top of your knee. So not this, that's too high. This is, well, you know, hey, you, if you do a butt to grass squat, uh, it'll count in competition, but you are losing a lot of power if you go all the way down. Um, and people also have a tendency to uh, lose tension at the bottom. So if you imagine if you have 500 pounds on your back, um, it's impressive if you can do that, but you really just want to be in this neighborhood here. Uh, just below parallel. I am. Um, I think it's important to video yourself or train with uh, experienced lifters, a coach preferably, uh, somebody that can uh, critique your form because there's, it is a technical lift. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. Um, when you're holding the bar, it's very common for people to experience wrist pain because of the awkward. Uh, it's, it is, it's stretching your arms out. Some people can't even get under the bar that way. They have to work on being able to stretch their arms out and under. Uh, but if your wrists hurt, wear wrist straps. Uh, you don't have to really tighten them like you would with a competition bench, but just wrap them uh, so that you have some support that's totally legal. Um, <clears throat> you do uh, want to make sure your feet are planted firmly. Uh, you know, we don't want to rock forward on our toes. We don't want to be on our heels. We want to be flat all the way down. It's like your feet are glued to the ground. You have no choice. Um, I talked about pancaking, which is where you're bending way too far forward. And you know, if you're too straight, you're you're gonna you have a tendency to uh, fall backwards. But that sweet spot for me is kind of this angle. You know, I got, I'm got below parallel, my back is at an angle, and I try to maintain that throughout the lift. And you know, as you get heavier, you might, you might lose your form a little bit, but ideally, you're gonna be like a robot with a hydraulic press for legs. You know, imagine that you're just a machine and you're, these are bolted and you, your back is made of metal and it doesn't even have the ability to flex. You know, and I, I'll even sometimes, make robot noises, I'll be like, zzz, 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 gah, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Whatever kind of cues you have to have to maintain your form, that is the most important thing. So, you know, we want to start light and work our way up. Uh, let's get some weight on that bar. Before I go up, I want to show you guys quickly how to fail a lift. I fail lifts all the time in training. And I have a technique for, for this. And the reason why is if, you're, if you've never failed a lift, you're not pushing yourself. But you want to be safe. There's techniques to doing it. Um, I have these. These are guards. What these are for, at this height, this is set up for failing on the bench. Meaning, so, if they're below touching my chest, but they're above dropping the weights on my head. Um, I'll move this up one, and now it's set for failing on the squat. So basically, I have the, the, at this height, this is just below parallel. And what, the, what, what I can do is, if I'm squatting, and I'm losing it, I can't get back up. Oh, oh no, so I'll dump it forward get out from underneath it 
and then I'll unrack it, put the bar back. So essentially, if I just, I, I'm stuck, I can't get the bar up, I'm gonna purposely lower it and lean it into the rack and just get out from underneath it. That is the safest way to do it. You don't wanna dump it backwards. Um, I've, yeah, well, in competition, when there's a guy spotting you from behind, if you dump that weight, he's catching that with his arms. Uh, and I've, I've personally, I was at uh, nationals and I was spotting for the United States Powerlifting Association. And I was spotting a uh, female lifter. Uh, sorry if I assumed her gender, but she was lifting in the female division. So, and she had about 250 pounds on her back. So, it, I'm glad that it wasn't a man of uh, squatting 600 pounds because I would have been dead. Um, she popped up. I, I saw when she got under the bar, she didn't have it steady. She didn't have it set right. It was too far back. But the spotters are not there to say anything. We are silent. We are there to perform our function. I just kind of knew it was coming. Um, my job is, when she, if she fails, if she can't get back up, I get underneath her and put my arms around her. And the two side spotters grab the weight and we walk her back into the rack. Simple. Uh, you do have to be kind of careful with women. With men, you can just get underneath them and rah, you know, love on them. But with women, you've got to watch what you're doing regardless she as soon as she got up she dumped the weight she literally threw it and I was behind her and I caught it in my arms and it almost took me out I mean it was only 225 pounds I can search her that but I you know I'm not able to catch that so it really hurt I've seen guys get their arms broken because of this and in competition if you dump the weights like that irresponsibly they'll kick you out they didn't kick her out. They deemed that it was an accident. She didn't do it on purpose. Um, I was a little miffed, but you know, hey, it happens. Uh, that, but that's what I what I'm saying. You just don't want to throw the weights off of you. Whatever's behind you is going to get destroyed by that. Uh, what if your kids in the gym lifting with you, or a family member, or you know, or or you have a limited space and you got nice things in the room. Uh, I mean, that'll go through a wall. That'll smash whatever is behind you. I've also seen the weights bounce back and take guys out at the knees. Um, so, it, you know, I'll, I'm rambling on, ranting about this a little bit, but I can't stress enough that is it, it is important for you to practice failing. You need to know what to do when you need to bail the weights. When I'm benching, I've got the face guards, and I don't bench with collars. And I've got a lot of guys will argue, well, you don't bench with collars, that's unsafe. No, it's not, because if I'm trying to break a personal vest and I don't get it, I will, as safely as I can, lower the weight to my chest, and I will dump one side, and then the weights will fall off, and then the other side will swing back, and it'll make a nice big thud on the floor, and everyone's like, oh, what happened? That's intentional. Then I can work my way out of that, and, you know, I can, you know, it's embarrassing, everybody laughs, but that's safe. You're not going to hurt yourself. Uh, so, I demonstrated that. Let's move on. All right, we got 225 on the bar. Uh, I'm going beltless. Uh, I, don't, I like to go without a belt until I start getting into that 70% range. Uh, I think it's better, it trains your core better. Uh, I don't have to do a bunch of sit-ups and crunches when I can just do heavy compound lifts and it does all the work for the core that you'll ever need, I promise you. I don't do sit-ups, I don't do planks. I'm not against them. If that's your thing, do them. Uh, whatever you're doing, do it. I mean, if it's gonna help you uh, get healthy and strong, by all means, if you enjoy doing it, doing it. But, I don't like doing them, and I don't need to, because I do squats, and deadlifts, and military presses, under the bar, onto my little shelf, elbows out, and up, one step back, get my feet placement, flat on the floor, got my head down a little bit, not like this, I'm looking straight, but it's in the, uh, I have my head aligned in the direction that my back is aligned in. Uh, and squat wheel. Notice my knees stay out. I'm sitting in between them. 
feet flat. So we got 315 on the bar, uh, starting to get to where, you know, I have to respect the weight. I can't just throw it around anymore, you know, I can't dance around and demonstrate it with you. It's not heavy, but it's not light. It's respectable weight. Um, now, that's not to say that if 315, 225, 135 is your top end, that is not to disrespect what you're capable of. I've been training for a long time. And this to me is lightweight, but there was a time where I couldn't get that, I couldn't lift that. And I don't personally care what your numbers are. I'm not one of those guys that judges people based on the amount of uh, weight they can lift. As a matter of fact, I'll even go so far as to say that what I do is stupid. <laughs> you know, lifting's a passion of mine, powerlifting's a passion. Um, but you don't need to be a power lifter to be in shape. You don't need it to get a physique. You can, you can work with much lighter weights, different rep ranges, and I would be happy to talk about that sort of thing in future videos because most of the year when I'm not training for competition, I do what's called a hybrid program. I do bodybuilding and power lifting uh, combined, and I dial it back quite a bit. I do want to maintain my strength, I don't want to lose any strength, but I'm not necessarily focused on pushing that hot top end. What I'm, what I'm trying to do is get in condition, I'm trying to get, you know, uh, uh, more endurance, that sort of thing. So I'm not always focused on heavy lifting. But for this video, we're talking about squatting, and I would be remiss if I didn't try to get some weight on the bar and show you what I can do. Um, again, it's all the same. You know, it's the same as 135 as 500. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and put some chalk on my hands for grip so I can get that bar because it could roll down my back a little. I want to make sure I have a nice solid grip. Um, I'm a little more focused at the heavier weights. I'm focused on getting tight, you know, and tightening my core. I haven't put a belt on yet. I will probably put a belt on for the next uh, set that I do. Um, I still want to try to train without a belt up until I feel it's unsafe to do so. And the reason for that, as I said uh, previously, it's, it works your core. It's, you can eliminate sit-ups and crunches and all that if you train without a belt when you do your core, uh, compound lifts. Um, I promise you, I don't, I don't do sit-ups. <sighs> Get under the bar, get it on my shelf, get nice and tight, lift the blade up, take a step back, get my feet set, and break at the hips. Walk it into the rack and drop. All right. Easy peasy. All right, now we're belting up. Um, we got the 365 on the bar and it's a respectable weight. So when I put the belt on, unlike deadlift where I want it super tight, the squat, not so much. I'm gonna ride it a little bit higher uh, here's the issue. So the belt can ride right underneath the ribs here, and if you don't have it set right when you squat down, your 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 uh, core is expanding. It's got so much weight on the back that your core is tightening up. Everything's expanding into the belt, and the belt can actually, when you get down to the 90 degree position, it can kind of cut into your ribs. And when you got that much weight on your back, it's like, oh, that really hurts. It's not it's not a good deal. So we're going to adjust the belt, and I'm going to body squat it to make sure that it's not digging into my ribs or anything. Um, and then, of course, if you have it too low, it's not really doing anything. So I kind of want it nicely centered between the bottom of the rib cage and the top of the hip bone. Um, and that's what works for me. Uh, 
I'm sure other people wear their belts differently. I've seen guys wear them really low. I've seen guys wear them on the rib cage for the aforementioned reason. Uh, you know, they they, ride, they wear the belt way high. Uh, essentially, uh, I've discussed this in the past, the belt acts as a second set of abs. So you're expanding into it, and it just helps solidify your core. Think of this. When you go to the gym and you watch guys on the leg press machine, and they've got every plate on the gym in there, and they're leg pressing on that sled, why is it that they can leg press 2,000 pounds, but they can't squat 400? Obviously, their legs are strong enough. What gives? How come you can't barbell squat 400 pounds if you can leg press 1,000? Well, the core. The core is your weak part. The, the sled takes your core out of the equation completely. You have to develop a core. The core is everybody's weakest point. Now, that's not to say it's weak. I'm not saying your core is weak. I'm saying it is the weakest point. Uh, your legs are much stronger. Your back, much stronger. You're able to hold the bar. You've got everything going on. But if you don't have the ability to keep that bar from pancaking, dropping, if you can't hold it up with your core, you can't squat. So that's why I train without a belt for the most part. But, you know, for safety reasons, I have hurt my back a couple times, and I'm not going to take chances at this age. So let's see what it looks like. <clears throat> Same setup. I got my hands on the outside rings. A little chalk just so get that extra grip. Like I said, if your wrists hurt when you're doing this, put some straps on. And I might even do so because mine was feeling a little bit uncomfortable that last set. I'm gonna make sure they get under it, get my shelf on top of my delts, lift straight up, take a step back, get set up, deep breath in squat. Incidentally, I have my squat rack kind of bolted into the ground so that when I hit it with the weights, it doesn't move. If, you, if your rack's not fixed and you're bumping into it with that much weight, it will move. So take that into consideration. You might want to set something up, blocks, whatever, so that your squat rack can't move on you. Something to consider. All right, now we're starting to get a little bit heavy. Uh, this is... 405, uh, I weigh currently 200, 198, somewhere in there, uh, and I'm 46 years old, so age does make a difference. There's just not a lot of guys over 40 that are competing, and some of the guys that are still competing over 40 are amazing. I know one guy, he's 55 years old, he's still pulling 600 pounds, and my weight class, uh, he does squat what's what called classic raw, which means he uses knee wraps instead of sleeves. That does give you a significant mechanical advantage, but he's squatting close to 600 pounds. I think his bench is close to 400. Uh, I'm not going to say his name without his permission, but he, I, I idolize the guy. Uh, he trains here in Las Vegas, um, and there's guys across the country that are just amazing in my age and, and even older. Um, with the current numbers that I have now, if I stay in the 198 weight class, I could take the untested uh, records for 198 national. I could give, I could beat them. So that would mean for my age and weight, I would be number one in the country. But I got to do it on the platform. I got to make it official. Talking about it in a video, it's just talk. Uh, but no, theoretically. I could take those, as we stand right now, I, I could take them. Now, if I don't maintain my weight and I get stuck in the 220 weight class, I have absolutely no prayer of beating those records because that guy's squatting close to 600 pounds. He's deadlifting like 740 and his bench is well over 400. Not a chance in the world of getting those. Um, I would take uh, the Nevada State records in either weight class. So, you know, I'm not an elite international elite level athlete but i am i have respectable numbers and i'm well advanced for my weight and age i would probably be in the top 10 in the nation 
if I if I stay in, in the 190, what is it, 198 weight, weight, weight class? Yeah, it's 198, 220. Um, Anywho, enough chitter chatter. Get under the bar, chalk it up, grip, outer rings. Get on the shelf. important are squats, Della? Very important. Why are they important? Because it gets you a bit stronger. What does it make stronger? Your arms. It makes everything stronger. So, come here. Talk to the camera. So, that's it for squat day. <laughs> if you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'll try to answer it. Anything I missed, I can do a future video on. Say bye, Della. Bye. <laughs>